Hello, and welcome back to a continuation of matches, round number two out of four here at Guardian Games in Portland, Oregon. We're Portland Paper. I'm Travis Cooper. And I'm Arjun Kali. We are coming back to you with a mid-round game three wizard battle between Zenon Martin on Green White Titan, which I'm kind of interested in seeing what that's about, and Matt Dennis on Affinity. Matt Dennis running the... 13 land affinity build with actual affinity cards in it. Ooh, we yeah. get some frog mites. We get more than frog mites. I play this. I. Matt was the player I victimized with four main deck ancient grudges, <laughs> and I feel oh. <laughs> ever so slightly guilty. Um, but there are, if you remember from uh, from Mirrodin block, the the four four for seven, the vanilla four four for yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah. That's in there. Yeah. I love that we get affinity with affinity cards because that has been. A personal, like, a very minor minor pet peeve um, is, like, people call Affinity Affinity and it doesn't have any Affinity cards. Yep. Um, I guess Metalcraft is similar but different, so, yeah. Modular. It really should be called Modular. Yes. So that's what the deck's about. Hardened Scales <laughs> Affinity is the most egregious. Um, <laughs> like, that is so far from any Affinity thing. <laughs> free Mox Opal. I agree, Matt. Free Mox Opal. I, Mirror yeah. Enforcer, that's the 4-4. Four, four. I mean, the theme of the night is kind of going to be just band chatter that happens because we can't help it because it's just, it's probably the biggest, I think it's a bigger shakeup in terms of what the metagame looks like than banning Faithless Looting because of how ubiquitous the cards that got banned yeah. are right now. Um, but if you look at it historically, it's, you know, a lot of the decks that are getting banned out of the format minus Affinity are pretty new, like in the last six mm -hmm. months to a year, so. So, Xenon looking at a Summoner's Pact Knight of Autumn. Little miss the other one there. Uh, Matt gonna start us off. Ink Moth Nexus, Bone Matt Courier. Get, get in there, trigger. That's an annoying little guy. And yeah, speak, yeah, Green White Titan used to be when Titan was one of the top tier decks. The white splash was sort of the mirror breaker because you got to play Path Exile and your opponent didn't have Path, so your Titan stuck around for longer. He picked up a, Xena picked up a Field of the Dead for turn, got a lot of options on that once upon a time. I see a Castle Grand Brig and a Primeval Titan. Got the Summoner's Pact, kind of already got the Titan. Mm. Ooh, two Titans. I feel like so I'm curious Gernberg? if we're on Karoo lands uh, or if this is a new like Field of the Dead. I, I saw Field of the Dead as his draw for turn, and I believe it is that kind of list, similar to the blue-green Titan deck. Okay, so that like amulet-less. <laughs> amulet-less amulet, which just straight ramp into Titan. The blue-green one, you know, built to use Oko and built as an Urza Hunter. I um, believe was the deck that won GP Austin <laughs> in the, uh. I believe the top eight of GP Austin had 43 Okos in it. Or not 40, sorry. 20, I think 26 out of a possible 32. Is that right? Something. I have to remember. I think there was one non-Oko deck in the top eight, and there weren't a full play set in all of them. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I think it was at 20, 26, so, which is a lot. All right. Matt finding a signal pest and a Blink Moth Nexus. Not the most explosive start from Affinity, but I believe that's a Blood Moon in hand, which is going to be pretty good against a Castle Garenbrig, but not as good as it would be against uh, Amulet, where your, your Karoo lands tapping for two is pretty important and where you get all of your colors. You know, I don't know if Matt suggested his build from Sunday, but he oh, did say that he has funny. been running. Oh, we are also on game three here. Let's adjust that. Is it one and one? Yeah. It is one and one. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting that Matt just played a Damping Sphere because this Titan list usually plays Damping Sphere in their own sideboard, yeah. so it's not the most powerful thing you can be doing against it. Path, your signal passed. Get out of here. Gonna save himself huh. three damage with that. Four, five, depending on how many of the man lanes get activated. Well, this Bowman here is getting out of hand. He's been out of hand since turn one. <laughs> out of hand and into uh. the red zone. Also, for those asking about the theme song, that is an original. It is. Yeah, our um, producer, Ian Lunger, uh, added his vocal tracks to that mix. Ooh, 
Xenon having to think. He's got Night of Autumn. He's got Field of the Dead. He's got Arboreal Grazer. Who? While you're tapped down, kill your Bomat Courier. Oh, that's so sad. No one's going to know what those cards are until the next game. Never blink. Blink and you lose them. Mar Zenon's still at 14 against Affinity at this point in the game is looking pretty good for him. A lot of lands for Affinity. Yeah, he's flooded a bit. Um, and really the Affinity game plan is 100% get under, get it done. And so when you're starting to extend into the mid game against a deck that's going to go big, you're in trouble. Curious if we're going to see an Ink Moth activation here. I guess we have an Ink Moth and a Blink Moth. Do we have both of those? Inky and Blinky both. So you don't, do we want to go for the extra point of poison? Do we want to go for the one point of actual damage? Uh, why can't we do both? Is anything in hand so important that we don't want to just do both? It's going to be two points each. Well, well Signal pass gets in there. Well, you could pump Ink Moth with Blink Moth for that. True. Yeah. Could do that. And then you'd hit for three infect with a signal pass trigger. All alter alternatively, you could hit for two infect and uh, one, Some regular two, damage. three, We're four We're just damage. gonna go for the regular damage, looks like. So one, two, three damage. Just three. Xenon goes to 11. It's a long road from here. 20 life points, very many life points. Xenon's still on three lands though. I'm not sure if I care so much for that spring leaf drum at this point in the game. Unless we're looking at an affinity card, but I don't believe that was what's in hand. The other card in hand is a blood moon. I assume we're still playing Ravengers. Is that true? I think that you've got to play Arcbound Ravager. I, I can't imagine yeah. you're not playing Arcbound Ravager. I don't remember if I saw one when I played against Matt on Sunday but or Saturday, but that may not have had any relation to whether they were in his deck or not. Actually, I think I can look up this list. Mm, I have the feel of the dead here. There are, of course, Arcbound Ravagers in the deck. That would Play be nice. Grazer. Zero three Mox Diamond. Oh. Not really. I thought it got. I thought Grazer was just going to be a really busted card when it was spoiled. Um, it's seen play, but hasn't been ridiculous. I think it's been kind of overshowered by other more powerful things you could be doing. Opinions on that have been so swingy because it was printed and everyone went initially, oh wow, and then wow, this is trash. This is trash. This is trash. And then recently, it's had a huge uptake. People have been a big fan of it. Um, here's a Blood Moon. Does not do things. I guess Field of the Dead. Pretty good against Field of the Dead. Decent against Field of the Dead. Knight of Autumn and Arboreal Grays are not looking very threatening right now. Still have that Summoner's Pact. Just waiting. I guess you can Pact for if you have Rexage or another Knight of Autumn. He needs a second green source that is still green before he can safely Pact. Well, if you get the Knight of Autumn, I guess if, fine, you, so. if you have... Because there's no plane, so I think you'd have to have Rexage in the deck, but you could pack for Rexage to blow up the Blood Moon. But it seems like because uh, Zinnan's playing white, he's chose Knight of Autumn, which is kind of worse if you're doing the Pact to get out from under Blood Moon plan. I believe you do actually still name something when you play it comes into Playland. I'm not positive. Blood Moon. Xena notes correctly, does not matter. Just makes red. Here's the pact. We've got a plan. That plan is a Rex Age, I hope. <laughs> that it plan is not be. a Rex Age. <laughs> we have an issue. Come on. It's a... S okay, that's All right. a thing. That's a, a way... To pay for your pact. It's a way to pay for your pact and cast a titan in two turns. Okay. I was going to say, wheels are spinning, but Xenon has to find a way out of this. And if this is the way, then this is the way. <laughs> uh, been watching too much Mandalorian. It's not even good, but... I haven't even been watching the Mandalorian. I admit it. I missed that one. It's a reoccurring... Uh, 
quotation is this is a way. If the nerd says that and starts laughing, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Excellent. Now I know. Clue done. And cranial plating. So all of this uh, really not very scary amounts of damage I was talking about. Yeah, it's it turned into turned into a lot. Going to jump in front of that signal pest with an O3. Oh. Grazer bites the dust. Ornithopter gets in for one. Why not plating the ornithopter there? Well, I guess you can jump in front of the the. You can we well, see? I think the the you might want to plating the ornithopter there because you know you connect with the plating, and Xenon can't afford to kill your signal pest with his Sakura tribelder, or he loses to his pack trigger. So I think we connect a little better if we put the plating on the ornithopter. Untap, upkeep. Do I want to die? Do I not want to yeah. die? We're going to never choose <laughs> death. Oh, we drew a basic forest. Choose life. We're going to try to choose Titan if we can. Oh, Grazer has reach. Good point. It's like invisible ink on that card, I swear. Yeah, you can pluck, pluck stuff from... It's got a big long tail. It's hanging from trees. Adorable. Six artifacts in play for Matt. Potentially eight. <laughs> we have another pact. And another grazer? And a prime time. If only we could cast Is that the dang Titan. <laughs> I think we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get graze. some jumps. Gotta get some jumps. Ha! Get there. The tiny, tiny time walk, that is. Titan also has reach, right? In Does the it? sense of it reaches right through and punches your opponent <laughs> straight in the face. Uh. Trample is a form of reach. Right? <laughs> uh. Oh, God, there's another oh, cranial plating. Uh, oh, God. Math, math. Tiny, tiny time walk ain't cutting it anymore. Zenon falls to two. So even if you do Titan, there's no real... Nope, um, not really. That is a windswept heath. It's a mountain. That's a fancy name. <laughs> <sighs> I think... <laughs> Matt, don't fracture my gust, he asks. Which would be... Kind of amazing here. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. Yeah, that's that would be incredible. If that would be great. If you pulled that out, seen in summoners packs. Look for an answer. Does not find one. Scoops it up. This match is gonna go two one to Matt Dennis here. Hornet Playing. Queen would have been an interesting grab. It's true. Hornet Queen would have would have done it. So that's like amulet, like uh, Sarah, Sarah, like summer. Maybe hmm? this past summer. I feel like Hornet Queen was an ambulance sideboard. So yeah, like uh, they've been in the sideboards. Ago. It's hopped into the main deck occasionally just for diversity. Um, and when wide decks are good, like if human's good, Hornet Queen's good. I've liked it against Burn even. You're just like, meh, try getting through this. Yeah, I feel like also the new, uh, it, there's not a definite 75 for the new Titan list that mm -hmm. aren't playing the Karoo lands or maybe playing like two Karoo lands. Uh, but I feel like there is kind of a diversity of top end threats that can be had off of the pact. So. Absolutely. I think that the amuletless amulet decks may be kind of out of here without the Oko decks to fight. Uh, but we will see. 